Hello there. This Mazda 2 crashed into a wheelie bin at 30 miles per hour and that smashed its door mirror. On the plus side, that means we can now peer inside the wrecked mirror and see how it worked. Welcome to Cast by TV. Now this mirror was from the left side of the car and as we can see, it took quite a wallop when it hit the wheelie bin. So the glass itself is shattered, hence I've put tape here to stop that spreading everywhere. The back of the mirror is missing completely. That was never found. We've also lost one or two bolts. Now, when this mirror worked, the glass moved up, down, left and right electrically. The question is how, and the answer in part is via these two electric motors here. Here's a close up of the two electric motors. Now this top motor moved the glass left and right, and this bottom motor moved it up and down. Now, of course, each motor has an output shaft, and we can see if we peer down there that each output shaft has a little toothed white cog on it. There's one at the end of my pen, and the other one is just down there. Now, the cogs on the output shafts of the electric motors connected to the glass itself via these two plastic legs, there's one and there's the other, on the rear. Here's a close-up of one of the legs and as we can see it's got teeth on it. So, as the example, let's say this circular clock represents the cog on the output shaft of the motor that moved the glass up and down and that this screwdriver represents the corresponding leg on the back of the glass. So the motor would spin the cog in this direction, which would pull the leg in like so. That would move the glass down. In contrast, when the motor spun the cog the other way, the screwdriver, sorry, I mean the leg would move that way and move the glass up. Simple, eh? I tell you what, let's remove one of these motors and see if it still works. That will be interesting. Now, to get that out, we're going to need a very small Torx bit. Now, the question is, how small? We'll try T8 first. <laughs> nope, that is definitely too small. So we'll go one size up to a T10 and that's fine. So pop that onto a ratchet and fingers crossed it will come out easily. It doesn't matter if we break anything at this point, that chip has sailed. Yes, that's coming out no problem whatsoever. Well, I've connected this electric motor to various batteries in various ways and not even the slightest flicker of life, nothing at all. Now, I've had no trouble getting motors like this to work with similar setups in the past. So it is, of course, possible that I damaged the motor getting it out of the wing mirror, but I don't think so, which does suggest it was damaged when the car crashed into the wheelie bin at 30 miles per hour. So this is what's inside one of the electric motors. The green and red thing are magnets. So as we can see, they stick very well to my metal screwdriver. And this thing here is the armature and that lived in there like so and spun around. Just like that. Now, this door mirror was also heated, so if we have a look inside, 
we can see that electricity flowed in through these black and white wires here to these heating elements. See those black bits? And they run further than we can see and help to remove condensation, frost and other such things from the glass so the owner could see where she was going. Except near wheelie bins. So there you go. That's how an electric door mirror works on a car. Now, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to Car Spy TV. That makes it easier to find my other content. Can you also please do me a favor and click like on this video and I'll see you next time. Do you think we can fix it?